Hey everyone, welcome back to NFL Network Studios. Wabi we'll joined by Daniel Jeremiah, one of the lead analysts for the NFL Network for the draft. You enjoy talking the draft? I do talk in the draft, but I do have to say, you know you just want to be wearing a short sleeve shirt here. I, I, I do. You're just wearing this, you don't make people feel bad. It's always cold that's, in that's the studios, you know. though. It's always it cold. That's what cool. people don't know about studios. It's freezing in Underrated here. So I want to inside info right there. Yeah, that's right. We have the draft coming up. Vikings fans are super stoked. Yeah. They want to get tougher in the trenches. That's what Mike Zimmer wants to do, and that's what Vikings fans love. Is this a good draft to do that? Very good news for you, yeah? because yeah, this is what this draft is. It's a big people's draft, and y you look not only offensive line, defensive line, but to me, even like you talk about the edge rushers, there's some flashy edge rushers, mm -hmm. but the guts of this draft to me, interior offensive linemen, interior defensive linemen. So if you're looking to get stout up the middle, which I believe in just about any sport, you build your team right up the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a good draft to get that done. All right, let's start with the offensive line and talk a few specific names, yep. guys that you think could be good fits for the Vikings. And you know we're, we're picking at 18 and 50. So yep. realistically speaking, Kevin Stefanski, Gary Kubiak, whatever that blocking scheme is going to be, you would know more than we would. Who are some names that would make some sense at 18 and 50? Well, there's some really good names there that are intriguing to me. Um, you know, Garrett Bradbury is one of my favorite players yeah. in the whole draft out of NC State. He's played center there. Uh, I think there's a chance even if you want to get him on some of the, the zone stuff you'll run in this offense, mm -hmm. he'd be, you could hold up at guard even in, in that role. Eric McCoy from Texas A&M, probably not going to be a first-round pick, uh, but somebody, again, can play center, either guard spot, and you can really move him. Uh, Cody Ford has played tackle at Oklahoma. I see him more than likely sliding inside to guard. Not only does he have kind of tackle athleticism to be able to go side to side, he's somebody that can really create movement in mm -hmm. the run game. So, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's a good group. Do you believe in this tight end class like so many other analysts do? It's fantastic. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you, you start looking into the third and fourth round, you're going to get guys who you're going to love the value that's presented there. Uh, when I go back and kind of look at where I've rated players and where they've, where they've gone, uh, the league traditionally over the last several years hasn't valued the tight end position as much. I think it's a little bit of that and a little bit we haven't had that much talent at the position. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out what they think of tight ends this year because mm -hmm. they're a whole host of very talented players. How about returners? You know, the Vikings lose Marcus Sherrills to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Mike Hughes was a returner for us. He's coming off of an injury, so we don't know what his role will be in that phase of the game. Any returners catch your eye in this class as you're watching tape? There's one that's just intriguing to me, and, and that's Miko Hardman from mm -hmm. Georgia, who has got ridiculous mm -hmm. play speed. And not only can he return, I think he's got some real upside as a receiver. Put him in the slot. We see so many of these teams with the, with the fly sweeps and the bubbles yeah. right now. Just get the ball in a playmaker's hands and let him go. And he's somebody that could de definitely take uh, the top off of the defense. Josh Jacobs from Alabama is actually a phenomenal kickoff returner. Yeah. But with the recent investment at the position for the Vikings, I, I don't imagine they would go in that direction. All right, last question for Daniel Jeremiah. How do you feel about quarterbacks in the draft, generally speaking? The Vikings have one. We have Kirk Cousins, yeah. and we love him. He's yeah. our guy. Mm -hmm. But there's something to be said for taking a quarterback once every couple of years or yeah. three years to have a developmental prospect, especially when you have the Kubiaks on our staff who can develop quarterbacks. So what do you think about that? I, I'm always for taking a flyer on, on yeah. someone. I think you should draft a quarterback every year. You yeah. know, if I'm running a team, that's what you're doing in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. Um, just see if you can salt a guy away, develop him, show him off in the preseason, and either you get yourself your future starter or you audition him for the rest of the league and you get yourself a better draft yeah. pick. So. Uh, some guys that are intriguing to me in that fifth round range. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, with Gardner Minshew uh, from Washington State, who's got a little savvy mm -hmm. to him. I like the way he plays the game. Uh, you've got Rippon up at, at Boise State, who's very intriguing to me. Clayton mm -hmm. Thorson is another one uh, who's won a lot of football games there at Northwestern. There's some intriguing names I'd keep an yeah. eye on. Path to the draft is fun this time of year, isn't it? Oh, we, hey, we're ready to go, man. I think you have the Vikings war room coming up soon. You ready for that? Do we really? We can go study. All right, guys. All right. I got work to do. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. See you, bud.